if we can get started. Hi everyone, I'm Heather Ratliff. For those of you I don't know yet, I work with Cherry Capital Foods and now I'm one of the co-chairs of the Food and Farming Network. Welcome to our first uh, study session post the summit. That was a great summit, thanks for everyone who came. Um, I think that one of the things we learned summit every year is all the great work that all of our partners are doing around the community and it's great to acknowledge that we're really kind of the sum of all of our parts and it's all of the work that we're all doing out in the world um, that makes the Food Farming Network so great. And so for those of you who don't know, one of the things excited is in the beginning of this, well, uh, I work on school years because I'm from the school, but the beginning of this uh, year, um, we decided to switch off every month, other month and do a study session and then a business meeting study session. So as we go around and do study sessions, we're learning about the, in more detail, the great work that our community members are doing. And so here we are at Grow Benzi to learn from Josh all of the, what's going on. Um, we do have some people uh, joining us online, so if we're going to talk, let's pass the mic, and I'm going to pass the mic over to Josh. Oh. Great idea. You know who's with us. Online folks, uh, do you want to say hello? Starting with Wendy. Wendy, do you want to say hello? Good yeah, good morning, everyone. Hello. From the beautiful snowy north. <laughs> and Larry. Hi, folks. I'm Larry Dyer. Another one of the Petoskey contingent up here. Good to be with you all without having to drive through the snow. And Jen? I second that. Hi, guys. I'm Jen. I'm with Island. Jen Scott. And uh, we have one of our Southerners, Sarah. She's from Grand Traverse. Say hello, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Sarah Eichberger. All right. Is there Benzie anybody County else? County native. <laughs> nice. <laughs> anybody else we missed? All right. Um, I'll start and say I'm Bill Palladino from MLUI. We'll just pass that around. I'm Zane Schwager, and I'm working on farmland access from Milan Law Found. Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Trisha Phelps with Taste the Local Difference. I'm Brian. <laughs> I'm Brian Bordage, formerly the uh, farmland program manager at the Grand Traverse Regional Land Conservancy, now working on my own on uh, program development and policy work. I'm Jim Barnes from uh, Northern Delights, which does business as Alberto's Taqueria and the Chris Lake Catering Company. Josh Stoltz with Grow Benzie. Sandy MacArthur with uh, Oriana. Tracy Shifley with Grow Benzie. Sharon May from the May Farm and Lakes and Land Regional Initiative Food and Farm, Farm and Food System Project. Mark Colas, Farm and Freezer. <laughs> Paul May, May Farm. <laughs> well, welcome to, to uh, Grill Benzie, and for those of you, uh, welcome to Grill Benzie. <laughs> <laughs> Fun, Bill. Thanks for this opportunity, uh, Sarah. This could be the, you know, it's a reintroduction to Grow Benzie. But uh, today, uh, today I'm going to take the opportunity to fill you on on as much Benzie centric information that I can. And I'm super happy to have Miss Sharon May here because she has, uh, she's. Uh, she's one of the um, advisors for Lakes to Land. She has a title with Lakes to Land Initiative, and they've did an in-depth survey, which is one of my my Bibles that I carried around when I first started um, at Grow Benzie six months ago. So they interviewed farmers, large-scale, small-scale, retailers, um, restaurant owners, uh, just general citizens of the community to to find out some needs uh, about the food network. 
the food security, the food security survey that you have probably all heard about is uh, from the Benzi Sunrise Rotary, and that was Chris Thomas. And so that was a five county survey that they were out interviewing pantries and interviewing all sorts of folks. That was another Bible that I sat down and read before I went to bed. These are all, these are all initiatives and energies that were put into this place or into this county in this area before I was even, you know, introduced to the food revolution that, that you've all been a part of. Grow Benzie started six years ago at Marley Deemer's graduation party. So you might know Betty, Betty and Marty, right? Um, it was at Marley's graduation party where um, there was Judge Nancy Keita, there was uh, Patty Cantrell, there was Barbie Stowe, and of course, a bunch of cool people. And they said, wouldn't it be great to have a community garden? From there, they moved to a meeting, an official meeting at, uh, as part of the Benzie Human Services Collaborative, just as a potential feasibility, what can we do? Mary Ann Hendricks, who was one of our first board members, was part of that conversation. Within 90 days, they purchased this property as a board of directors and had four signers on this, the, the, the deed. Six years later, they hired me as the first full-time executive director. So there's been a lot of changes through that time. This, before, before what you see here, if you go back 80 years, the uh, crystal view building up on the hill was uh, uh, similar to the state hospital. And they farmed this entire piece of property down to the river. And here at the end of the, the building, there is a silo foundation. So there used to be a silo there. Um, up to maybe 20 years ago, they had this as a, as a market space. Chippewa Farms uh, used the greenhouses as a nursery. And then they sold products here, similar to the market basket here in Beulah. And there was big refrigerators even six years ago that, that we got rid of. Uh, the greenhouses were full out greenhouses. They had, um, had boiler systems. They were year round. They had the hard plastic over the, the roofs. Um, but that you know, kind of fell apart. So by when we bought the property six years ago, we dismantled all of the uh, boiler systems and then ended up putting on skin uh, plastic skin roofs, which we'll see during the tour. Um, also, what has happened just recently, just in the last couple of years, has been, and this is all board, I'll just back up here, the board is all volunteer. It has been board initiatives from the get-go. So it's their work, their, their passions, their, um, their, their vision that has gotten us to where we are today. With the green walls and the incubator kitchen in the other room, um, it's Everyone has put in a ton of effort, so I'm really privileged to have this position because of all the work that they've put in to this point. The incubator kitchen in the other room was one of those projects where there was a grant available, there was a, a community member that wanted to support it uh, financially, and this is through the MDARD uh, grant that we ended up with this fantastic incubator kitchen, um, one that we teamed up with Hart, the uh, starting block down in Hart, and then there's one up in Traverse City. So we were talking about it earlier, how this is a model of a lot of great things here in Benzie County. The incubator kitchen is one of them. The, the community gardens are in place. We have 27 community gardens. That was the first thing that was cultivated here. Four of them are used by master gardeners uh, that donate their food to the local pantries. Um, next to that, we have a youth hoop house uh, from an Allen Grant, the Allen Foundation, uh, gave us uh, money for a hoop house and some other things. We're working with a club at Benzie Central who is looking to infiltrate technology into the greenhouse space through solar technologies and pumps and um, aquaculture, aquaponics. Uh, it's got a lot of different ideas. So we just want to let that be, uh, let that be a youth, youth space. And then out back, you'll see where we have uh, space for raised beds that we're, we're working with the Maples Long-Term Health Facility in, in Frankfurt and the Council on Aging. Uh, so there's access with disability. We, we had Annie and Jessica out a couple weeks ago from the Disability Network to make sure that everything is accessible. 
So it's already in place. Oh, not to mention the studio house. We have a sewing studio that has eight sewing machines. It's just this wide open space. We have all of your material that you've donated over the last six years. Jen shop is waving our hands around. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> so we so we have uh, it's it's a pretty sweet spot, and we're going to start classes this this month. We also have a knitting studio, which is more like a knitting nook living room because the knitting the yarn market down in Beulah closed just a couple months ago. So she donated a lot of her materials and, and furniture. So there's all these things that are that have been happening over the last few years. What I'm going to do here before we we go on the tour is tell you what we're doing come Fourth of July. We're really busy, but we got a lot of good grants, a lot of support, a lot of financial uh, backers from the community. This is the this is the map of the the property here. Can you can everybody see that out there in electronic land? <laughs> Not so much. Not so much. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. Here, let me try this a little better. This is close up action, please. So, so, the, so our biggest resource is our space. We are a great, a great center for this community in Benzie, but we also have the the reach of Traverse City, Grand Traverse County, Leelanau County, Manistee, right here centrally located. So what we plan on doing is utilizing the, the Slick Magazine tr Taste of Local Difference this year. We're, we're converting this space into the Welcome Center for Northern Michigan for food. It's going to be a food chamber of commerce. Think of the Cracker Barrel model where you can buy stuff. This is all going to be for here. On this end, we're going to be selling local products like honey and, and the, all the local alpaca Gwen Frost, like everything that's, that's being sold uh, in this community is going to happen on this end of the building. On this end, we'll have booths around the outside. We'll have our tables that can be moved. Um, and that will be for our cafe. Because when people come here to get that magazine and know that they've got to go to Storm Cloud in Frankfurt, or they're going to go to St. Ambrose Stollers, or they're going to go to Leelanau, they've got their Taste the Local Difference magazine, and then they're going from here because this is the Food Chamber of Commerce. When they come on the weekend, this is a cafe. It's a yard to table cafe. So everything that we're making out in the greenhouses are being served out of this kitchen. So, and that's only two days a week. So we don't want to compete too aggressively with, with our neighbors. Uh, Mondays, we have our farmer's market all around the front. We have food trucks, we have demonstrations, we have music. The great thing about our farmer's market is we're aggregating food product during the day for wholesale and for our chefs. So locally, chefs come here at noon, they can get their, all their produce for their restaurant, and then by three o'clock, it's open for retail and everybody, you know, the general public comes here. So we at least have this aggregation one day a week. One, on Tuesday, we have extra food here. So now we're processing the food in the, uh, in the kitchen, in our incubator kitchen. So we're processing, we're plugging into the farm to freezer, we're plugging into the pantries. Um, there's talk about a food truck that we can do her out to the communities with the pantries, uh, but ultimately we have places for the food to go. We all know that there's places for food to go. So the extra food that we have on Tuesdays, we've aggregated for the farmers. It's off their hands. Now we're getting it to the retailers and the, and the end users, and that's on Tuesday and Wednesday. So we still have the incubator kitchen available for caterers and local entrepreneurs on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday some of Friday, but we're looking to have the cafe open Friday, Saturday, possibly Sunday. Um, and then that's going to, that's going to show, uh, that's going to show everybody when they come to see what's happening, how much they want, they're buying into the community. So when they know they, they're buying their honey or their, um, their Gwen Frostic stuff here, they're actually buying into the community if they're buying products. So we have Tracy Shifley, who is our kitchen and facilities manager. She makes hot fudge. So they can buy that hot fudge here. So we're helping with the whole marketing of these products. And when people buy those products or buy the salad, farm fresh salad, yard fresh salad, they're buying into the whole concept of us promoting this as a, as a community entity. And this is a campus. So this is a model of the kitchen, the growing, the, the education. And so it starts with soil. We're building soil. We have classes how to how to build soil, healthy soil, how to grow food, 
So planting the seed, growing the plant, cultivating, um, maintaining, harvesting, processing, preserving, all that's happening right on this, in this four acre campus. Then we have our training for the culinary community. So we have, we have successful restaurants, but for them to be the best, for us to be the food center of Northern Michigan, we have advanced professional development classes for chefs to come in and learn these things. Servers can come here, you, the restaurant owners can send their servers here for this advanced safety training and server training all right here. Retail can be taught right in this facility. So with our, uh, with the, the cafe set up, how it's with, um, you know, with the media and all the technology right in this space, what we can have is, you know, up to 200 people here for a class. So having 50 people here from the local restaurants, we, we can easily handle for this, for those sorts of situations. So then by the time, you know, we're serving the food, they're learning, and you can imagine on the walls here, this is, the, you know, the chalkboard, cafe, chalk written walls. We got pictures of the farmers, of everybody who's donating uh, their food to the cause. We have uh, videos of all the kids' uh, projects that, that have participated and, and went into this project. So the idea of people coming here from out of the area to see what they're buying into helps keep this a perpetual cafe. They really buy into it. They promote it out of the area. We're, we're just riding on the, the coattails to taste the local difference where it's just a market. Really promoting what we're doing and people buy into it. And we're, we're completely buying into to, to TLD. And the idea is for us to promote it and it gets you know promoted up towards the Leonard Grand Travers um, Manistee. So yeah, so that's, uh, we, got, we got a busy couple months ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might just wait a year to do all of that, yeah. unless one of you have a million dollars to come in and promote. This, these are just ideas that, that have been thrown on the table from the meetings I've been attending for the last six months. Aggregation, education, um, marketing, uh, this is a, is a, you know, the food, the food region. These are all things, this is just a solution that I was just talking about that that encompasses everything that we've been looking to do. We can't do it in a couple months. It's been half, it's been work. You guys, most of you have been working on this for years and years. Um, I'm just in an ideal position with GrowBenzy to be able to, to make, to create this solution. These are, these are all different ideas that have been thrown at me. Sharon May is, you know, I could probably name all, each one of you have given me ideas to throw into this, to this pot, but, the idea for Grow Benzi to be a, to be a central point um, of this education and promotion is, is how I see us moving forward as an organization. Currently, we're, we're having a, a training session consultation with uh, North Sky Nonprofit. We received a Rotary grant to do the governance training, to do some vision and strategy, strategy setting, and then we'll move, you know, that's the next couple months. Well, I can get some, some major moving points on the table, and then they can give me some direction which ones they want me to go after. These are the ideas that I've been presented that, I've, that I'm kind of pushing. I know also with the Food and Farming Network, we're looking to, to create some sort of uh, survey to, to create uh, or identify the, a metric in order to see how we're progressing towards, you know, our food security goal. Mm -hmm. So working with Bill or Heather, the crew, to identify this, what an effective survey would look like for all the seven counties, 10 counties. Grow Benzi can play a major role here in the Benzi County area and beyond by going out and not retracing Sharon's footsteps and her team that's already went out, but using that information, using Chris Thomas's information from the security, um, security survey, and going out with that information in mind when we talk to a farmer and say, what do you need? We are ready to do this. Restaurant, what do you need? We are ready to do this. Small farmer, what do you need? Potential farmer, student. And then once we gather that information, it's going to uh, be directly applicable to the surveys that we're doing on the 10 County um, Food and Farming Network survey. So that's another part of the, 
part of our buy into food and farming network or this relationship uh, with, with all of you is to know that Grow Benzies, as we started this little spot in the, on the map, the connections are invaluable for us in 2016 and beyond. We've just been kind of watching for the last six years as, as different people get us to where we're at. Now we're to the point where we can really start being a major player in the game and be the be a resource. When when we had our meeting Monday with the Michigan State uh, Extension Council, one of the ideas Renee McCauley said, oh, wouldn't it be great to have a central point or person that could coordinate some of these things? And so Grobenzi has that opportunity to be a, a coordinator of things. And that's that's where that's kind of where I'm at right now, coordinating things. Now we just have to figure out what the things are. So we'll do a tour. Uh, what what questions do you have? We have some questions before the tour and after the tour. I just wanted to throw in some um, coordination. We're looking at how the resources. We're looking to get. We're looking to have more local products, more local producers, more vendors, you know, because we're going to hopefully have a second store. And, um, and so what we're, what we're trying to do is put, put into place some sort of an educational um, piece that would um, allow for folks who want to sell products at the store to have all of the information that they need in order to do that. So, for example, if they're growing food, that the whole idea of the gaps, you know, what, what safe practices and how do, how do they do that? If they're producing, you know, that they're secondarily producing products, you know, how do they access, you know, an incubator kitchen or how do they get access to being able to produce their products, you know, safely? Um, how about, you know, food safety issues as well? Um, packaging, you know, and the whole thing with marketing and packaging and all of this stuff that has to go with that and ingredient list and all of those things. And so rather than us trying to, you know, explain, because we, we don't have all of those answers as the retailers, but if there was a central, you know, we're trying to coordinate to have sort of a, um, a you know, a group of people who could be that sort of central place where we could send either they would be able to answer a lot of these questions and help you figure this all out so that you get and you can bring that product to our markets or whatever. And I'm sure that would be true for a lot of retailers that are out there. They need, they need and want those products. Um, but when you are just starting to grow something and you've got an idea, you're not really sure how to take it further or what you need to do. And so we want to put together some sort of a, an educational like summit that's ongoing so that every couple of months we offer this to people who are who would like to you know to eventually sell products to to the stores and but I need you know but but needing to have a panel of experts that would be able to provide that you know that and so working to try to figure out how do we how do we do that and put something in place so that when we have because we do get a lot of folks when we were at the farm conference a lot of people came up and said we'd really like to be able to sell I have I raise cows or I raise you know whatever it is, and I want to sell, so Oriana, how do I do that? And it's not just like, you know, we'll just show up with your stuff. It's, it, you know, there's got to be a process. And so um, we'd like to make that process be as easy but, but thorough as possible and utilize the experts that are in this area that are doing that. Because I know, you, you know you're doing gaps, you know, training. You know, there's all kinds of people that are doing things, but how do we get them together to then provide that service for prospective folks who want to do that. So that's one of the things that we're thinking about and needing help to try to pull that together. Fantastic. Actually, Tracy has put together classes uh, this last year to do um, label design was one class. Excel QuickBooks was another class. So it's just a small, I hear you loud and clear, that's exactly what people are asking for. I'm looking to have this to be that sort of sensor and with the, the trend of off-site satellite campuses for education uh, happening with MSU, NMC, Baker College, you know they're looking to be, you know they're looking for some some new sites. That would be this 
place. And if it's regular, if there's enough promotion and regularity to the schedule, then people can be exposed to it this month and then know that at the end of the summer, they still have an opportunity to, to bring their, their product to market. Um, what, what I've been finding in doing the food assessment report and follow-up since then is that we have a lot of um, we have a lot of things that are going on. They're just going on in compartmentalized ways, and we're not able to share this information effectively with each other. And so sometimes we do duplicate efforts uh, unintentionally. And so what's coming to the surface for me and, and a conversation I would like to have with case local difference especially, and it, it goes into what you and you are doing, is a place where is a, maybe a website, something dynamic. Because once you establish what the procedures are, the changes could just be updated. And someone could go to a PDF to find out how to retail to this place or whatever. But it would be like a storage house of information that could be continually updated. And one of the biggest issues is we don't know how to reach each other. The Taste of Local Difference Guide is a really great tool, but it's only accessing certain farmers and not all the farmers are. And then the, and that is really good for direct sales, but as far as wholesale sales, retail to uh, restaurant, I mean, producer to restaurant, there's not a communication mechanism or a place we can all go. Just like this is a physical, I see a need for a digital presence like that. I don't know where if that fits in, but yeah. it's what I've seen the need for. <laughs> I, yeah, I have, uh, we've been working on on job training and egg or hospitality training program um, uh, for now for a couple years and um, we're doing a little different twist to that this year um, we have in the past done uh, about eight people at a time uh, through a two-week program that ends in a testing for serve safe certification um, we're now kicking off our, our new program actually we're going to start one on Monday um, and it is a hospitality not good food handling training so at my end of it in the processing end of it the hospitality training has dealt with situations from you know restaurant situations from the front of the house to the back of the house it deals with checking in orders uh, coming from a truck. It deals with uh, uh, preparing foods and temperature checking and placement, um, uh, refrigeration and freezer placement of products. And, and then it, it dealt with, um, you know, everything from the cooking, the chef part of it, to, to out the front door or out to the, to the, the front table um, and the handling. So now we're going to uh, do a training program that involves the, uh, the handling of the foods and the processing of the foods, which is what I'm more involved in. Um, so we we can you know possibly work together to add some training aspect to to some of the programs and the handling into the products. A um, little different than the farmer getting it to the store or or uh, or or the, the retail sales of it, but it would be the processing and preparing of, of the foods in a, in a little different way that. Uh, Um, it's Goodwill. Goodwill is my Fresh Start program, and so what my Fresh Start is is doing is like, you know, I have five people right now for Monday. We generally wanted eight. What we do is after after the program, we'll place um, uh, you know, four of the trainees will go on to jobs in the in the community. Four of the trainees will stay in an apprenticeship in Farm to Freezer and help me process the fruits and vegetables that we bring in through the program for the season. And we're gonna, we set this up so right now we're doing it so I'll have employees to process asparagus and strawberries. And then there'll be another training and then I'll have the blueberries and the, uh, the whole crops covered. And then uh, the later root crops and, and, and that covered at the end of the season. So my, my perspective is, is three good food handling trainings. Then the other part of it is that we also do the, um, um, the hospitality training that is serve safe certification. This is a 
certificate program, but not serve safe service. Josh, did you ask if people online have any questions? Yeah, anyone out there in the ether world have questions? Somebody muted. So what Grow Benzi is doing now is the farmer's market. That starts Memorial Day. And we've been doing that for four or five years. We participate in all the uh, statewide and federal programs. Um, we did receive a grant from the farmer's market promotion uh, ag marketing division. Um, so we'll be promoting a lot of our farmer's markets all throughout Northern Michigan. Um, we have this facility. This is a rentable facility. Tracy is, is working on uh, creating some marketing materials and start so she can start promoting this. Weddings, we've already had some folks interested in weddings, receptions, just general parties. Uh, the Michigan State, Michigan alumni groups always want to watch the Michigan State games here. So this is, this is accessible by everybody. Um, Except for, yeah, except for some. Uh, the incubator kitchen is rented by caterers and, uh, and entrepreneurs. That is ongoing. And our farmers, uh, the community garden will be filling up here in the next uh, month, month and a half. And you'll see the sewing studio and the knitting studio. Uh, the classes are starting in April. And then the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that's happening right now is our, is our growing. And so we have a greenhouse manager by the name of Britt Eckert. She used to work for Lutz Farms. Uh, she's the market master here and in Manistee. Uh, she has a horticulture degree from MSU. And she started, the you'll see in the basement, a germination station. She started 600 tomato plants, organic heirlooms, in February. that are now all about six to eight inches tall. We just moved them out to the hoop houses outside. Uh, 400 of them to get them acclimated to the snow, I guess. Uh, <laughs> hopefully they're okay. And uh, we use, we have another part-time staff person that helps her, and then we have a lot of volunteers that help. So we'll be transplanting those into the ground. We had a work bee on Saturday to set up some row cover um, lines in order for us to get them in the ground. And by oh, by the end of the summer, we'll we'll have 10 foot 10 foot tomato plants. Hopefully each one will produce 10 to 15 pounds of tomatoes. We sell those at the farmer's market and to local restaurants. And that's a big, big source of revenue for us. Uh, we also have carrots and broccoli and other starts that we sell at the farmer's market, but that's in some greens and microgreens. But uh, the majority of our work in the greenhouse are the tomatoes. A project we just started uh, this last month is called Benzie Composts. We teamed up with Marlene Wood, who's the uh, Benzie County Solid Waste and Recycling Coordinator. In one of their surveys, recent surveys, uh, a lot of the community members were asking for food compost and a place to, to compost their food. So we also teamed up with the Benzie Conservation District who sell compost bin and the portable kind. But uh, we trans, we, uh, we made some compost bins out behind the, our garage, our barn downstairs that you'll see. Um, transformed was the word I was looking for. Just some storage that we had, we have space for food compost. So now folks will be able to buy in. You know, we're working with Ty and Carter up in Traverse City with Carter's Compost. Um, it's just a start. So now there's folks that need a place to compost their food, they can come here. We have buckets and space. There's all the other uh, initiatives we'd like to, to to take on, but at this point we just wanted to uh, to get this started. So that's compost. So that is happening right now, and of course those raised beds will be happening. Council on Aging, uh, we're starting a gardening club to help us look over the the Platte River Elementary hoop house over the summer. Um, Mark and I were talking about the the issues of having these school hoop houses or getting kids or adults involved in the summertime, it's, it's that work, it's that attention to the maintenance of the plants and watering. And so if we have a garden club with the Council on Aging, I think we can keep those, those plants alive. So that's a little experiment we're going to try this year to see how organized we can get. 
as a satellite greenhouse. We have conversations with other entities around the county, including Crystal Mountain, to do more community gardens. But again, it comes back to work and labor and who's going to take care of it. So uh, we have all these great visions of, of uh, volunteers helping and uh, social, social groups and <laughs> volunteer armies. But uh, the reality is that there's a lot of organization that needs to take place first. So I'm working on that here at Grobenzi, but there are spaces out there in the community that eventually, and maybe it's the CSA model, maybe there's some sort of compensation involved for folks that we could pay to supervise these, these plots, but um, there's still some work that's going into that, but that's on, ongoing too. Uh, what else? I think, well, that's what we're doing now. So there are things that we're doing now. Uh-huh. I, this is Sarah Eichberger, MSU Extension. Quick question: Do you um, could you uh, just quickly go over what the process or 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 maybe vision is for the future in terms of or in in perhaps this is I think this is already happening to some degree, but the the use of Grobenzi for um, an educational site for for example health education, health and nutrition education is that able or the site is it able to um, be used in that way and is there what sort of details might be involved in in uh, figuring that out or making that happen okay so we we've teamed up with uh, the cooking matters team a couple times already this last year um, and I think most of you are aware of that that's nutrition and, and cooking and food purchasing and economics but Tracy, now that we're, we've uh, created some more of these marketing materials, we'll start doing more outreach uh, to get some of these classes in here. And even just, just uh, besides classes, just show that this is a space that can be used by Food and Farming Network, MSU Extension Council. Um, so Sarah, we're right now just kind of ramping up our promotions to get any sort of folks in here. Abby Beal is a nutritionist who's had multiple classes in here. And what we're trying to do is have a better plan. In the past, we've just kind of thrown them against the wall and just said, here's a class coming up. What we're trying to do is get a better plan to promote it throughout the summer, more of a series or tie them into the farmer's market, which is something Tracy's working on. Um, ideally, we'd have nutrition classes here on a regular basis so folks know that, that there's a consistent place to go to, uh, to participate in that sort of thing. But we have room for 250 people, so we could have a... We could have a nutrition gala if we wanted to. <laughs> Thank you. This, this is uh, a tiny bit back to what I was saying earlier, and then what we've been talking about is um, there are a lot of programs out there that are happening, and I could see Grow um if we were dialed into each other just bringing like whatever I, islands doing stuff that's so far away for us to get to but if somebody's already put the program together and they're 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 doing it at island you know why not duplicate it over in this part of the, the woods and so again how do we who is that is there a role in terms of coordinating um these things or even as the food and farm network is there a role for us to sit down and go, what is your organization's plan for education? How can we fill in the gap with each other or know that that's happening over here and, and as a region promote, if you're interested in this, this is happening here, you know? That's what I'm looking for. And I don't know if Propensy or the, the network has a place in that or what, but I'm, you know, I think it's an interesting question for us all to be looking at, that's all, including Propensy. Yeah, so I'm working directly with Island and with the Manistee Connections with Brandon because there's those remote classes that are already happening, like seed saving, saving or, or mushroom growing. And you know, Brad and Amanda are great designers. I'd love to just piggyback on their design <coughs> expertise. But yeah, that is definitely something that Grobenzi wants to kind of be in the middle of, of those uh, reaches. The North, North Central College. What's the one we are yeah. Michigan College. Yeah. Central Michigan College. Yep. So Bill and Heather and I went up to uh, go 
they've got the whole their whole network up there. Some of them are on, online right now. That is a great model. Mm -hmm. That communication, whether or not there's participants or not, it's just the idea of of getting the information out oh. there. I love getting their newsletters. I love to see that there's something happening. I don't know how many people show up with a potluck, but I get motivated to know that there's a potluck up there in the mm -hmm. top that uh, is happening. And I'd love to be able to do that down, down here. Yeah, I think Safe Local the Difference is great at um, marketing to the consumer directly. You know, those people who are buying direct. But we need an internal mechanism. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for, that internal mechanism for us to communicate and access each other's resources. Any questions from Petoskey? Mm -hmm. Like I said, we, we can go on a tour, come back, regroup. We, the restrooms are right here, and then we can, uh, if you have any other further questions, we can take care of them then. I think uh, what we'll do for those of you online, probably best for us just to uh, say goodbye, and what we'll do is yeah. I'm going to follow Josh around and uh, uh, use my iPhone to videotape the tour, and then we'll glue all this together and post it so you can have a chance to see the, the tour at some point. But I'm assuming probably best just to close out the online portion of the meeting, and we'll catch up later, I guess. Um, that's going to work. Great. Sounds so, good. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, hold on. Um, any, anybody up there, uh, you have any announcements you want to make for the group while you're uh, still online? No, I would just add a thought though to, um, you you just mentioned the things that are happening in, in the Petoskey region and, and, you know, we have been pretty successful with that monthly potluck that, you know, kind of gets through that, we coordinate work groups to get things done, but we're definitely at a point where we're having conversations about trying to hire somebody to do some of the networking communications things that you've been talking about. So, um, it, the, the, the potluck is a great way to just keep bringing people together, sharing a lot of ideas, and, and we, we have been able to get some work done, but there's a limit to how much work you can get done, and so we're, we're finding that we, we kind of need to find a a person that can move that along a little bit, a little bit more. So just, just to add that into the thinking for where, where you guys are headed. Great. Well, thanks everybody for hanging on. Heather, you want to tell them goodbye? Jeremy. I'm just, <laughs> that, I'm gonna thanks for chiming in guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot for making it possible. Yeah. I appreciate this. Yeah. It's great. Bye.